For further insight, let's bring in Ben Shapiro, editor in chief of the Daily Wire, host of the Ben Shapiro Show. Uh, it says here the largest and fastest growing conservative podcast in the country. We have not in, impartially fact checked that, but Ben, since you say it every day, I think we'll take it uh, at least as truth right now. Nice to see you, my friend. The president says now it all starts to make sense. Is this FBI agent a critical piece of the puzzle? I'm not sure the FBI agent is a critical piece of the puzzle, but it's pretty clear for a long time that the FBI has its own biases, and to remove those biases would be to paint an impartial, uh, a, a not complete picture. Well, one, one of the problems here is that we know that James Comey was basically letting Hillary Clinton off with nothing but a public slap on the wrist. Now we know that another FBI agent who was working on that particular case was biased against President Trump. I, I, one of the things I haven't found out from the story, maybe you can tell me, I just don't know, uh, is how we knew that this agent was doing this. If we found it out from Mueller's investigation, then Mueller fired him. Then that obviously reflects better on Mueller than if this were an outside force that had found out that this FBI agent was biased against President Trump and then Mueller had to fire him for no other reason. Great question. Uh, our reporting from uh, James Rosen and also Jake Gibson on this was that Comey fired him. I haven't heard exactly how, uh, was that Mueller fired him, exactly how that transpired, uh, as you point out, will be very interesting to figure out. The president uh, saying that the FBI's reputation is in tatters. Uh, if everything is political and nothing is sacrosanct anymore, does that become a larger problem for the republic? Well, it's certainly a problem when we have no trust in any of our institutions. I mean, the president is at war with the FBI. The FBI is at war with the president. The, the president's at war with parts of the DOJ. Uh, right now, it seems like no one trusts any member of any institution. And that means that you're just going to side with the, per the people that you feel best about, the people who you agree with most on policy. There's a poll out today from Alabama showing that a vast majority of, of members of the Alabama voting public feel that Roy Moore is innocent, not because they actually have verified the, the facts, but because they don't trust the media. That demonstrates the level of antipathy toward the media, a uh, level of antipathy which I don't think is completely unwarranted. So, yes, as the institutions are torn apart, it's going to be very difficult to put the country back together. We're not operating off the same basis of common facts. Speaking of institutions, you can also include in those institutions American tradition. One tradition is that former presidents do not speak ill of the current president, especially overseas. Take a listen to President Obama, see if you think he violated that. Now. Uh, I, I grant you that at the moment we have a temporary uh, absence of American leadership on the issue. President Obama there talking about uh, American leadership on climate change, but still, what a break. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of usual for Democratic presidents, actually. Bill Clinton was largely absent uh, during the Bush administration, but Jimmy Carter obviously never went away. I mean, he's still running around blabbing about whatever he feels like blabbing about. President Obama couldn't last a full year before he started going abroad and talking about the current president of the United States. George W. Bush has been absent from the public scene since he left public office. So, uh, you know, I, there is a, a pretty stark gap, it seems to me, between Republican ex-presidents and Democratic ex-presidents when it comes to speaking about the, the people who come right after them of the opposite party. Matt, Matt Drudge tweeting out, what about a Logan Act investigation of a uh, citizen Obama conducting American <laughs> foreign policy? Uh, it's a nice quip, but it makes an important point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the fact is that you know, a lot of people are saying that Mike Flynn violated the Logan Act when he was talking with the Russian government about policy for the incoming administration. The Logan Act is probably unconstitutional. It's really never been enforced. I think there's been one trial on it since it was imposed in the in the very, very end of the, the 18th century. Uh, I, I don't see, you know, why what Mike Flynn was supposed to be doing talking to the Russian ambassador is so bad. And the fact that Matt Drudge is pointing out that if we're going to start going Logan Act on people, that Barack Obama would be in that in that penalty box. He's not wrong about that. I mean, Nancy Pelosi, if you recall, during the Bush administration, was flying over to Syria and making her own foreign policy. So if we're going to start doing, if we're going to start imposing the, the Logan Act as some sort of actual legal standard, there are going to be a lot of people who find themselves in the dock. Well, it's too bad you won't have anything to talk about tomorrow on your podcast. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll see you then. Thanks as always. Good to see you. Thanks so much. All right. According to cable news, it was the worst political moment in history. I just want to thank you because you're very, very special people. You were here long before any of us were here. Although we have a representative in Congress who they say was here a long time ago. They call her Pocahontas. It's just beautiful. 
But that sent the chatterballs chatterballing. He seems like he's promoting it with his, uh, this Pocahontas nonsense. It seems like he can't get off of you. Is he afraid of you? If somebody came out and talked about white people the way he talks about these other groups, that person would be, would be uh, highly uh, 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 criticized, and rightfully so. That remark met with stunned silence from everyone in the room. Because everyone in that room knew it was a racist slur. Oh. All right, someone should buy stock and fainting couches. So Trump called Liz Warren Pocahontas in a meeting with heroic code talkers. Bad timing, true, but racist, no. For a slur it must be derogatory to the actual group. Here it was derogatory to a person, Warren, masquerading as part of that group. Trump calling her Pocahontas was in effect saying, I'm here with Native Americans, I know Native Americans, and you, Liz, are no Native American. <laughs> yeah. An old Lloyd Benson favorite. Here's an analogy. Let's say you're Joe Scarborough, and I'm sorry. <laughs> and you lamely try to play guitar, and then you see him and you say, hey, nice tune, Hendrix. <laughs> That's not a slur against Jimi Hendrix. It's a jab at Joe who's making a mockery of Hendrix's art. It's like when Chris Cuomo says something really, really stupidly obvious, and Wolf Blitzer looks at him and says, no s***, Sherlock. <laughs> anyway, the experts in all things racist can't see that Liz Warren piggybacks on real Native Americans, but the reflex to shout racist exposes the irrational, emotionally charged bubble these people live in, which then Trump loves trolling. See the fake news trophy, which he says should be given out to the network that lies the most about our most favorite president, which is him, <laughs> Trump says. And that little joke turned the media into molten jelly. President Trump stepping up his attacks on the free press. For the president to tweet what amounts to an assault on journalists who actually risk their lives to report the facts, it's stunning. <laughs> assault. That's an assault. Is that news or a Real Housewives marathon? <laughs> and when they aren't shrieking, they aren't showing up. Here's Chancy, i.e. Chuck and Nancy, <laughs> failing to meet with Trump over the tax bill, giving Trump this awesome photo op. <laughs> Where the hell is Chancy? <laughs> maybe, maybe they had other plans. Ironing Conyers pants. <laughs> Hiding from Al Franken's tongue. Locked in Matt Lauer's office. All right, finally. Last but not least, the other no show CNN boycotting the White House Christmas party. They said, uh, quote, in light of the president's continued attacks on freedom of the press at CNN, we do not feel it is appropriate to celebrate with him. How nice of them. It's like Scrooge pocketing the coal and giving away gold. Thank you, CNN. It's a gift everyone wanted. Now, of course, they did send reporters, which is good. You never know what happens at the Christmas party. Ooh, last year, remember Lou Dobbs and the ice sculpture? <laughs> the emergency room still talks about it. Now, being at Fox News, we love to poke Yuletide fun at CNN. They're the tiny Tim of news, cute and pious. And have you noticed they must be shown in every airport or Democrats complain? I wish I could do that with say yes to the dress. <laughs> but I get CNN, why attend a party hosted by a guy who constantly insults you? Even if it's in Bill Hemmer's hot tub, it's not worth it. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. But there are two reasons why CNN should have showed up. First, he is the president, so you should go. Even when Obama complained about FNC, we went. Even Kilmeade came, and everyone hates him. <laughs> Second, not going suggests a failure to comprehend Trump, even after a year of his nonstop trash talk. At this point, if you still take that seriously, you're like Gramps using a rotary phone. Get with the time, CNN. And really, be grateful you're even invited. I wasn't invited to the Christmas party. Everyone else at the Five and Fox News was. I would have gone, even to play an elf.
Let's welcome tonight's glorious guest. We'll grab your pepper spray and body armor because this guy's a riot. Actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lissau. <laughs> She is so bright, you can see her from space. The Federalist staff writer, Bree Payton. She's as brassy as I am gassy, and that's a lot. National Review reporter, Catherine Tim. And finally, he can inflate a blimp in three breaths. Former bodyguard, my massive sidekick, Tyrant. All right. <coughs> Uh, Jamie, good to see you. What do you make of this? Uh, what do you make of Trump's overall? Uh, how about the Christmas party? Let's start with the Christmas party. Yeah, and, and the one thing about Trump, though, that I did just realize, mm -hmm. he said, like, I'm your favorite president. Like, he picked a thing where there's only w one of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that would be like me going, I'm the best comedian in Alaska, because that's where I live. I live in Alaska. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're like, yeah, we know, because you're the only one here. <laughs> right, right, right. But the Christmas party, I'm starting to think, like, if, if anyone has ever gone to a Christmas party, it's an, they're awful. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe they just, no one wants to go to a Christmas party. And they're just looking to, like, because this happened, I'm boycotting my Christmas party. I'm not going. <laughs> really? Maybe really? everyone's just looking for an excuse not to go. I feel like it's going to be, at some point... Just Trump all alone with a cake, yeah. <laughs> telling everyone it was packed. Yes, but you know what, Bree? Who cares, right? I mean, if they don't want to come, like I would have, I wasn't invited, and I would have gone. Meanwhile, my peers are there, Bree. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. And also, I think, you know, the media, every time Donald Trump says something slightly negative about them, they take it and run with it for two days, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, CNN hyped the fact that they weren't going to show up at this Christmas party for like a day and a half and milk that as a news cycle. And I mean, this is really why America hates us, mm -hmm. right? Like, they hate us for good reason, because when we don't go to Christmas parties, we make a big stink out of it. Yes, that's not exactly. what people in Wisconsin do. You know, Kat, uh, whenever I'm looking at Trump about to say something, like with the Pocahontas thing, you can see in his brain that he's about to jump off a cliff. Yeah. Do you notice that? He's like, he's like this. He's like, is this the time where I talk about her? It's with Native Americans. Yeah. And then he jumps off a cliff. Isn't that what a comedian does? That you, you are always thinking about jumping off a cliff. Like, everything you say is a risk. Right, but the interesting thing is he's not a comedian, he's a president, and now a lot of comedians think that they're politicians, and the president is a comedian, and that's just where we live now. That is so true. Uh, but, you know, again, kind of the wrong time for it. Again, <laughs> It can't be offensive because she's not actually Native American <laughs> and has taken resources from people who actually are Native American. So I don't know how she gets on TV and is that upset and people actually book her for that. Yeah, I know. I certainly don't understand that. But it would make more sense if the president drank a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would just make more sense. I know he's against alcohol. Yeah. I know it is. And people say, you know, he's had family. But it's, it is. This is where all the energy comes from, Tyrus. Like, I don't have a lot of energy at night. You don't? I'm you drunk. never stop talking. I know. <laughs> That's about it, though. Yeah. I don't do much else, Tyrus. Don't want to know. Except stare at your photo. Uh, okay. There's a question coming? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't go to the Christmas parties. Yeah. <laughs> Stuck at a table with him. So. I love Christmas parties, okay? Yeah. You weren't invited yeah. either. No, I wasn't, but I would have gone, even if everyone hated me, because those are the best parties. You just sit in the corner with your cocktail glaring at everyone and play the victim. It's amazing. Who lives like that? <laughs> me! I'm not going. No, you know what the worst thing is, Cyrus? People who say they're invited and then say, I'm not going, right? I never said I was invited. I'm not. I'm, going so, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about other people that oh. I know. Oh, like oh, I was gonna go, but I had a thing. Yeah. What thing would you have that was more important than the, the president's Christmas party? Do you think that this is an interesting reversal of a polarized relationship where the media like, always targeted a public figure? This is the first time that a public figure targets the media, and we don't know how to deal with it. Well, I, I'll tell you how I deal with it. Literally, I'm just like, <laughs> oh, bro. I mean, it's. Here's the thing, like, uh, this week for Trump, I think, has been, like, it, it's been so hard because I'm excited about the, the tax. I think we're going to get the tax going through. I'm excited about that. It looks good. But there's been so many distractions that are just not needed. And I think when you talked about, like, that pause, that's not him. That's his conscience going, Bro, please, no, don't. <laughs> and then he, and he says it, you know. Yeah. And, and even uh, the thing with the retweets, like, he didn't bother to. That was to, a problem. He didn't bother to look at who was sending the stuff. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he's focus on all the wrong things and, like, and here's the thing about those the stuff he put out there that whether it was Pocahontas or the the Muslim attacks from the the neo-nazi group in in England 
The problem is it's going to hurt our agenda because when the when the ban when the travel ban comes back, I believe it comes back in like three weeks. I got another part of th they're going to use that to hurt our, our security. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, well, it's about mus keeping Muslims out, and then a, a judge is going to say, oh, well, we can't use it, and that's the problem. It's some of the stuff is entertaining, but it hurts. I think our agenda in the long run. Yeah, not all of his tweets are perfect. <laughs> no, like, no, and he's not. But that's why he was elected. He's not. He's yeah. not a perfect politician, and we don't want him to be. But sometimes, just yeah. you know, <laughs> that's where Jamie and he. Uh, oh, actually, you really got me thinking now about the look Trump gave. Like yeah. it's really, really funny. You're right. Like there was that. Mo like he literally looks like you know, like when you give your dog part of your steak. Yes. And he's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. You know? And it's like, that is also the face that you see before people get suspended for a week from a TV show. <laughs> like, yeah. In my brain, yeah. this joke, it could be uh -oh. really funny. And it, then I say it, and then you get the call, and then you're home for a paid, <laughs> home for a paid vacation. <laughs>